Audio, Field Recording Artist-Led Culture Presented by Sluice Episode 001 Sluice is a London-based non-profit artist and curator-led initiative which since 2011 has worked with other artist-led initiatives, projects, galleries and collectives to examine expanded practice, critical, institutional and capitalist adverse artistic activity. Primarily, Sluice is an artistic inquiry. Sluice stages international and domestic expos, publishes an eponymous magazine twice yearly and publishes digital content on sluice.info. Location Leeds, United Kingdom, 22nd of May, 2023. This intro is recorded at Convention House, one of East Street Arts' artist-led residency and accommodation offerings in Leeds. I'm here to attend Hive, a conference on sustainability and the artist-led sector. Sluice has previously published an edition of our eponymous magazine dedicated to the theme of the institution and how to navigate it as an independent-minded artist how to maintain independence and adaptability whilst perhaps necessarily open yourself to external accountability is at the crux of the issue. For many, this isn't an issue at all, just a clear trade-off in return for perceived financial security. For others, including me, the danger is it often admits the most interesting artist-led initiatives, independent initiatives not willing to be instrumentalised as community service providers. Some artist spaces are commercial, they can evaluate their success on, in financial terms. Some are social impact orientated. They can evaluate their success in how many people and which sections of the community they have impacted. Both of these spaces would say that within these frameworks the challenge would be to program interesting arts. And many do. What I'm interested to see is how this conference addresses the number of spaces that are neither commercial nor socially orientated those that aim to avoid the compromises of both the commercial and the social sectors. Fantastic. <laughs> put all the pressure on <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, so can you tell me um, your names, your roles, your roles generally and also your role in the conference yesterday? Mm-hmm. One by one after the other. You start. Okay, so my name is Kate West and I was the senior producer of Guild, um, but my new role now is artist-led development and research lead. Uh, I'm Benedetta De Torre and I was the PhD researcher as part of Guild. Um, the uh, PhD researcher at the University of Leeds uh, with a collaborative PhD with the Street Art to Luca Guild. What else? Ah, and uh, yesterday I was the curator of the conference mm-hmm. and uh, we co organized it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> These are lovely, fluffy things. Um, <laughs> is it on? Yeah. yeah. Hi, my name is Jean Morrow. I am a curator writer, researcher, and um, my research is really closely aligned with that of Benny's, and a lot of the work that I would like to do is very closely aligned with that of East Street Arts, but I try to transplant it as much as possible to a Northern Irish context or similar. And what were you doing yesterday? I was uh, facilitating a workshop session along with Benny, and... uh, participating generally in the conference? Um, I think, uh, I thought I, I wrote down my definition of what the conference was about because I thought that'd be funny because I feel like that's what everyone was, I mean everyone was there for different reasons but also um, trying to come to terms with what it was going, what they were going to get out of it I thought. Anyway, this is what I was thinking it was about. Um, so the aim of the event was to encourage artists and organisers to pull apart and examine their organisational structures in relation to their own motivations and desired outcomes. Does that sound right? Uh, I would say in part, in part that's right. Um, I think it's less, less uh like personal and more for like the greater good i think even though you you are reflecting on your own artist-led space it's 
we want to do that mm. in <clears throat> collaboration to kind of build a healthier arts ecology, really. Do you agree, Benny? Yes, I would <laughs> say. Do we need to bring it closer? Um, I would say it was about these two levels, so the interconnectedness perhaps between the individual artists and how they run their organizations and then how they coexist together. Yeah. And, the, and so the conference was really uh, very much about bringing people together to get to know each other better, make connections and uh, see where everybody's standing to understand how we can impact it on each other and contribute to each other's work. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah, I was just, I was, because my <coughs> point would have been that the solutions are not the same for every pro project. Yeah. People have different motivations for the project. So if you're socially facing, then like your one word was just about sustainability. The answers for that are necessarily different from other projects. So you're less about that and thinking about the commonalities. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I think in finding the commonality, there might be space to exchange knowledge and I just think it's even though your immediate solution might be something that you feel you know what it should be or what it is I think in having conversations with other people you might then find like different solutions or and also just like not feeling like isolated in finding that solution I think that's what I was quite keen to like get across in the conference. I just wanted people to feel like, well, yeah, we're all kind of here, even though we, our struggles might be very personal to us, we're all struggling <coughs> and like there's just some nice camaraderie in that. And I think there might be all different solutions for everybody, but I'm not even sure we were aiming to find solutions. Yeah. We just wanted to bring people together and um, through that exchange, people could just find uh, whatever was useful for them. Mm -hmm. So, and then from there build maybe a solution for something. Uh, but definitely, I guess, um, we didn't expect to have the answers. And that's why the conference was built around this idea of being participatory so that we could rely on, on the expertise uh, from everybody. And everybody could really feedback on whatever the context in which each reality exists. Um, do you want to say something? No. No. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was too was I talking to you last night. I actually, after the conference is always the best time. You've talked to so many more people. <laughs> um, Alice Chandler. Alice Chandler's mapping thing is a form of uh, evaluating. You can use that model for evaluation, uh, yeah. can't you? Mm. Um, so anyway, uh, so how is how is what what metrics are you going to use to evaluate the success of this conference? Ooh, good question. Um, I mean, we'll have like tons of quantitative sort of data and and obviously we had, you know, surveys going around and we'll, we'll definitely do like a, a debrief of all of the um, people involved. I think we went into this conference and we kept saying, this is a pilot conference, this is a pilot conference, because it is, like, E Street Arts has <coughs> never delivered a conference of this size. Um, so we we definitely need to, like, reflect. If we want it to be a biannual conference, it, we, we need to do the evaluation thoroughly, really, um, and under, like just figure out whether it's, it's needed biannually. Um, I mean, I would like to see it happen, but... Yeah, I think let's let's plan some evaluation. We haven't we haven't done that yet. I think. I think because it's the first one, we don't end. It's the first one ever for history. Mm -hmm. There isn't a baseline to compare with. Yeah. So I think we are gathering as much information around what that was yesterday, uh, and then to then build perhaps reflections on a future mm -hmm. one on whether it's needed or not. Um, my feeling is that there could be. Uh, things that could be improved logistically, mm. uh, the themes and perhaps even the content. Uh, but the general feeling, I would say, is that it would uh, people were hungry to meet again after the pandemic. Mm. So it will be interesting to see if that is still the case in two years as well. So I guess it will be a matter of evaluating the program per se 
uh, in its context. Also, I think this this context had a lot of particular sense and it was meaningful at the end of Guild, the, which was a national program. And, and so in this particular context made uh, made a lot of sense. I mean, we, we never set any real clear goals, did we, or objectives for the conference? It was it was just a, a legacy conference of Guild and and we knew that's how like the way we wanted to disseminate the the evaluation report of guild and all of the uh, the research that we've been doing so i think for the next one it'll probably have some more defined like goals um that we can then evaluate against but for this one it was just it was just about shouting about guild and the work that we've done and the research really and trying to get together after the pandemic from an external perspective, <clears throat> sorry, um, to be invited in as part of that was uh, hugely exciting, but also to then be able to bring other people with me. Um, so because it was open to uh, both islands, um, it meant that uh, other people <clears throat> from uh, Northern Ireland were able to come and see exactly what I've been shouting at mm -hmm. them about now for a few years to say, look, this is where we even need to get to. Okay, some of the same problems are there, but to even have the conversation on this level is really important. And yesterday, just before they left to go back to the airport, uh, the other three who came over from Belfast said, right, we need you to come over uh, to our studios and we're all gonna talk this through and we're gonna read our guild evaluations. And they were all really, really excited and kind of galvanized by the entire day. Uh, and I think we will do that. And I've come away going, oh, God, I'm going to need to do a postdoc. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to. <laughs> uh, but I'm not thinking about that this morning. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of told us where we even need to s strive to be in terms of that connectivity. And we need to be making much stronger links with organisations uh, that aren't on the same island. But the connectivity as well across like countries, you know, we had like Creative Scotland there, you yeah. guys, like, we had some organisations from Wales. I think we need some more like UK wide like connectivity around these amazing pieces of research, but they're all operating in isolation really. And If I can add something on evaluation, um, I wasn't sure if to say it earlier, not to be too romantic, but I think the evaluation will be based on the legacy of the relationship and on the connection that were made yesterday, mm -hmm. which were just a start because obviously the conference was over one day, so mm -hmm. not a long period of time and everything, but there was build up, there was uh, a lot of engagement on the day. Mm -hmm. And again, I think people were hungry to meet. So. Uh, all these network, you know, all these networks, all these organizations that we said, oh, let's uh, let's speak again. I think the best uh, s sort of formal eva of evaluation will be if in one year time we are enriched by a much broader network mm -hmm. and mean again meaningful connections in that sense. Yeah, maybe we could actually, you know, get in touch with some of the people that attended yesterday in a year's time and and ask them if they're still following up with any of those connections. I think that would be really useful. I think I've committed to hosting at least five different people at five different stages in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's going to happen in the next yeah. five months. <laughs> um, did I have any more questions? I don't know. I was, mostly I just wrote notes. Because, um, I mean, part of the problem is that you couldn't go to all the yeah. talks. Yeah. Part of the problem or part of the solution? <laughs> I'm always part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Never knowingly part of the solution. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it could have easily been a two-dayer. Yeah, yeah. Very easily. Yeah. Which then forces people to stay behind. Like, because what happens after a conference is people go away. Don't yeah. They? But yeah. If they're forced to be there the next day, then they all go to the pub. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It was a two. It was originally a two-day conference, wasn't it? Um, the problem. Is, is budget, budget. <laughs> yeah. as always, yeah. <laughs> because we were quite keen to make this. I mean, we you can't invite artist led spaces and, and projects to a conference and talk about being wildly underfunded and then ask them to just pay to come to a conference. So we were really keen yeah. to like make bursaries available and, um, actually. 
I don't think we even exhausted all the bursaries that we had. Oh, we did. Oh, exhaust. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we read that book, Actually, yeah. yeah, and yeah. we went over a bit. Okay. So yeah. that was great, <laughs> which means it was needed. But yeah, yeah but that's that's where a, a big part of the the budget went, and I think we you have you have to do that. You have to if you want those people in the room, you've got to like support them to be there, haven't you? Well, because I couldn't go to all of them. It's hard to know what the general. Like I feel like the ones I didn't go to maybe were more uh, sort of practical along sort of governance and so on. Whereas the ones I did go to were the ones I was knew I'd be interested in, yeah. which was kind of trying to define things like sustainability but outside of the market. So that's how I was interpreting mm-hmm. it anyway. Um, so did you say what do you say what do you think? Do you think that people were there really were practical, sort of like how do you formulate a company? So um, I think the some of the um, uh, language around was practical, but in reality, all sessions had a really struck a balance. I think from the feedback that I got as well, and from how I uh, sort of commissioned it to the facilitators, struck a balance between some practice, but really the the practice only came from the parting. Uh, from sort of theory and reflection and bigger questions around uh, what governance is about. And for example, with the governance session, they didn't even think about uh, constituting an organization. There was none of that, but rather talking about stewardship co- as another way of, of governance. Um, and, and then, you know, from that kind of reflection, there were some practical takeaways. Uh, but they weren't really, I think, yeah, based on on, pra- on pragmatics in that sense. Mm-hmm. So a couple of things that stood out for me was Amanda Cato yeah. talking about um, how funders sort of promote over-professionalisation and there's something to be resisted. It's quite, I thought that was quite good coming from her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and Amanda's been so uh, involved in this last sort of uh, year, 18 months of Guild, and... She's so passionate about um, Creative Scotland supporting artist-led spaces and not not putting up barriers and trying to professionalise, you know, them so that they end up so wildly different from how they started. Um, it's it's just it's actually really refreshing to hear a funder speak like that. Um, I agree, and in a way, it was really interesting to see. Uh, obviously, we had, I think, a majority of facilitators that were women. Mm-hmm. I think Amanda mm-hmm. and... Uh, sorry, that w- I didn't have breakfast. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Amanda and Joe definitely are... Uh, and I think also Kate West uh, are some champions and leaders in, in, I think, in what I've seen yesterday in terms of uh, who we have around uh, as people that sort of uh, stood out um, and then something else that uh, that uh, was important for me, uh, again, was this sense of connectivity and uh, uh, and bringing people together. I think there was a general joy, even though uh, I squeezed people's brain with very intense sessions, mm-hmm. everybody uh, really engaged. And again, part of the aim f- uh, for this conference with me was to have people to engage. So it wasn't a sitting down and going to listen and zone out sort of conference, but uh, rather everybody in it together. Mm-hmm. Because that, that's the idea, like we are in it together and that's why it's called the, the hive and that's why we're trying to build a mm-hmm. healthier ecology, whether that's uh, finding individual solutions for you. Uh, it also will reflect on our work. because of, and, I th- and I think this is true in, in, in practice. Like if SLUS continues to to work like it just benefits all of us mm-hmm. right yeah so or if that uh, or if it is retard closes then we need to see how the ecology evolves around this uh, what what the, what they will leave behind us as an empty place there mm-hmm. so i think all these sort of uh, connections for me were important and i think the fact that people were really engaged engaged throughout until the end was a big win and i was just going to say well, well i was going to ask you you both um, sorry, I'm taking, I'm taking up your job. <laughs> this, this sort of um, idea of taking a PhD research and then connecting that with, you know, real life in practice sort of uh, running of a space, 
is that is that usual to have that kind of uh, connectedness or to to talk about your research in that way and to kind of you know link up with the not with the really yeah. and I think that's why Benny and I found each other in the world mm. but I think you do start to see a pattern uh, amidst uh, PhD researchers working with and around the artist led. And one of the reasons for that is the stability. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to be able to sit in something and really interrogate that and be paid for it. Yeah. And uh, it kind of speaks to a kind of broader structural issue. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, secondly, um, it's a way to make change. And um, we've kind of been trying to do that in various ways in organisations or in regions or in other forms of silos and uh, I think as I said in the presentation yesterday sometimes you just need to be able to, to speak in the numbers that people need you to speak in not that one is a quantitative uh, research inquiry by any means but it does obviously produce some data and and to be able to use that data to the people who speak in data can be a powerful thing and then they realise yeah. just how difficult things are mm. uh, and what needs to be done. Yeah. Also, like, really demystifies the the, the idea of what a PhD is. I, I, I think for me as well, like, it just felt like... Um, it, it feels like it's uh, inaccessible, like mm. it's this academic world that you're not really, like, a part of. But yesterday it felt like, oh, no, like, this is just amazing research that is just about trying to support the work that people are doing like it's not it doesn't have to be this like inaccessible academic like writings that that doesn't actually ever you know influence anything or do anything it's this is actually making me think of with the things that like sort of we learned from yesterday is that uh, the artist led is quite strong i think critically yeah. and like yeah. with solid research because um half of the facilitators i think have a phd or are working mm -hmm. towards it uh, people uh, even in the opening panel with the opening panel I think it was really brilliant to see the the breadth of guild and the kind of different research I think we touched everything in terms of the um, almost everything with the different facets of the of the artist led and mm -hmm. the artist run initiatives and ecology and then the rest of the conference I think uh, also gave a good breadth in terms of uh, different I, I do think that there's a a niche that we occupy where it's quite so practical mm. you know that we are using it to make change and I know from my perspective and that was something I mentioned yesterday I'm not an academic I would hate to be thought of as such mm. um, I, I, I'm i just furious about the state of things yeah. and, and w want to make it better yeah um, I think we're almost out of time I was trying to brilliantly sum it up because uh, I'm failing because I'm however, but there was. A, <laughs> but I was showing Vinnie a uh, interview that we did with um, Karen Watson in this room first time we came up. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I Have watched seen that. It? Yeah. And she says in it um, something about the importance of not letting putting the cart in front of the horse. Yeah. And like, and she was talking from a funny point of view, but also, um, like when I was at the at the conference yesterday, I was thinking that. Um, uh, like what's at the centre of this is the art and that's what's important obviously yeah. Yeah. and uh, <laughs> I don't know but something. just with like you know with Karen Karen stepping down you know after like 30 years it's like just yeah it feels like a very important moment really yeah quite nice yeah so we came back to the same yeah <laughs> and she she came in on a Sunday and uh, just to talk to us for like one hour that's nice yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, good. I'm going to run and get the train. I'm going to tidy up my suitcase, which appears to have exploded all over the floor. <laughs> Makes some sense of I love I those little much. things. I love them. <laughs> Sluice's audio field recordings will be recorded on the fly and released periodically. Visit sluice.info to see what we've done, what we're about, and what's in the pipeline. Doi, doi, doi.